If you have MS, you have probably heard of Matt Embry and the documentary called Living Proof. Now, if you haven't, I highly, highly recommend you check out that documentary. It is amazing. I have sent it to family, friends. I just, I just think it's incredible. It actually came out after my diagnosis. And what I found especially interesting is that I already was following a number of protocols that Matt found along the way for himself as well. So it was something that definitely appealed to me. I understood trying to find the natural approach and also seeing the tremendous limit in getting proper medical care for MS in the Canadian medical system. It's, it's pretty bad. I know some people would say it's wonderful, maybe they've had great experiences, and actually my very first MS neurologist was, was wonderful, and he was an actual MS specialist, and he was amazing, but he was also at the end of his career, and he has since retired and passed away, and, and we miss him a lot. He was incredible. He actually told me not to bother taking the medications. <laughs> you know, can you imagine a neurologist doing that? Anyway, that's a side story. I want to talk a bit about Matt Embry and his whole program. So the diet is called Best Bet Diet, and I've been familiar with it for quite a while, but didn't really follow it too closely because I was doing something more along the line of Walls, and in fact, Walls was a new diet that was just gaining popularity when I was diagnosed. And so once I learned about it, I decided it was the one that I needed to commit to, and I did, hardcore. I was doing the nine cups of different colored veggies and organ meat, which I hate, and all that. I was doing it all though, and not cheating once, and I cut out all sugar and gluten, which is still definitely not something I want to ever take again. So, um, you know, and oats and potato and other things that I can't have. So I did all of that, and then it kind of changed a little bit over the years. I still stuck with it, but I maybe changed up what I was doing a bit to work with, you know, what I could afford and what I could handle every day. So. That was okay and it seemed to be working for quite a few years until this past year or just over a year now when i have started having much bigger lesions and and seizures so and nothing else there's no other things i'm not i haven't had any vision problems or anything else so it's it's been a very weird thing because they're calling these bigger lesions tumefactive which is a very rare thing within ms and i watched the documentary living living proof as i mentioned and that was awesome. And then, of course, there's the best bet diet, which I had only kind of looked into. And I knew it was more along the lines of the Swank and Jelinek diet, which for me, I'm definitely more of a low, low carb kind of girl as opposed to a low fat kind of gal. I do better just physically overall when I have a higher fat, lower carb diet and I have an easy time keeping my sugars low. So that part was easy. But in the end, because I've still have been having these seizures, that diet isn't cutting it anymore. So I decided to really jump in and try Best Bet. And it was a change. I thought, oh, it's a bit of a tweak. And in some ways it was, but in other ways it really, really wasn't. There's a lot of change. I had to buy a lot of new foods that I hadn't, hadn't had before. My poor husband had to drive me all over town trying to find things that I needed because it's very hard to find things like, say, organic vegetables here. They just, they, we just don't have them very much. They're, they're limited compared to other cities I've lived in. So, so that was a bit of a challenge, um, but we did it and I, it's been going well. And we got some, even a, a new cooking device to try and spruce things up, make it a little bit easier to cook and also just to, to hopefully make really tasty foods too. And so far it's been going well. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, so I, 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 overall, what I would say is that it's been an interesting journey learning about the Best Bet Diet and Matt Embry and his story and the whole realm of what he does. And this whole thing, I was so happy to discover that what he does is, is nonprofit. And now it does, definitely promote his career, which is great. Um, but it, he's not making money off of it. And, and, and that's really sweet. You know, he's not costing MS patients more money because we're, we're kind of broke, <laughs> you know, we, we can't earn money, most of us. And we, we just don't have money to spend on, on these so-called cures that people are always trying to throw at us. And, and he's not pretending that it's a cure either. He's just saying, this is, this is what works for him. And it works for a lot of other people too. So that's what you should do. So one of the biggest things that I had to do when I started on the Best Bet diet, which was quite recently still, is I had to cut out dairy. I was still 
with the Walls diet, the early one at least, you could still have some dairy. No lactose, but you could have like low carb dairy. And so I did have that in my life and now I don't. I've been very, very strict. I have no dairy and I'm waiting for that to be something that hopefully will pay off. I'm hoping that means that I will stop having inflammation in my brain because right now apparently there's still quite a bit going on and I'm not really sure what else. Maybe there's another thing. I probably do have to do a food test. I know he recommends that. But that costs money too. So we'll see. I'll talk to my naturopath about it. But um, see if there's anything else that I'm just inadvertently adding in to my diet that I should not be. It's whatever it is, it's something that would be considered acceptable on the best bet diet. So it's hard to say what. I'm not even really doing nightshades. Actually, I haven't had any nightshades. It just happens to be that way. I've even cut eggs out as well just to be safe. So... I'm not really sure what's happening with all of that, but we'll just have to uh, to keep plugging along and see what, what's going on. What I wanted to say though, I think it's interesting because Matt's dad is a scientist and so he knows a lot of these things. He's researched a lot and he's done it because he cares about his son. And that's that's the key. You know, when you see just random drug companies and whatnot, you, you don't know what their purpose is other than to make money. But for somebody like Dr. Embry, he actually has a vested interest in helping his son and other people by extension. So, and, and that's why I trust, I'm more likely to trust someone like Dr. Embry, like Dr. Code, like Dr. Walls, because these are people who themselves are already dealing in their own lives with MS, whether it's personally or a family member. So they have a real interest in actually finding help. Whereas drug companies have an interest in making money and maybe kind of helping if they can, but mostly making money. So that matters to me. And I mean, that's true for, I think the majority of neurologists probably too, is that their job is to make money and to give you drugs and that's it. And it's not, it's not something that really matters that much to them. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some care a little bit more, but my experience is that they're not, they're not going to think about you. They're not going to lie there in bed thinking about you at night, wondering if you're okay. <laughs> they're just not, you know, you're just a patient. You're a number, a file. So that gives a little bit more credibility as far as I'm concerned to someone like Dr. Embry. So as far as the plan goes, um, there's a lot available. There's different social media groups that you can join um, once a month. The Embrys do a Zoom meeting that anybody can log into and ask questions via the chat. And Matt and Ashton will answer those questions for you. And I did join the last one this previous month and this past month, and it was fantastic. I asked several questions. I got full answers to every question. And a lot of other people did the same thing. And I just, I learned so much from it. It was just a wonderful hour for them to take out of their day to answer questions and to help and give us more information. And there were some things they just simply didn't know, you know, that, that's gonna happen. But generally speaking, they had just a ton of helpful information. And I was even able, I had joined a social media group for the diet and we had questions and nobody could find the answers to. So I asked those questions and now I know what I, so I could say, well, Dr. Embry said this or that, you know, so that is great. So I really, really appreciate that they're doing that. Again, this is just a, a really kind thing they're doing to give back and I, I so appreciate that. I think overall what they're doing is important and useful and I also really appreciate the things that Matt Embry has said about things like the MS Society and the MS Clinic. Um, my impressions of them are the same as his and they already were before I had ever even really heard of him or what he'd been through with both of those. The MS Society is largely a money-making organization. It's, it's not really there to help MS patients very much. That's been my experience. And they are, they're, they're about being organized and doing their own thing. They're not really there for you as the patient. So, no, I didn't always think that, but I, I've been around long enough, now I know. And the MS clinic, same thing, they're, they're very limited. They're there to give you certain very expensive drugs and that's it. So it's, a, it's not ideal as a, a person with MS, it's not, it's not a good diagnosis to have as far as being in this medical system goes, like, never mind all the battles that we have with this condition. It's, there's not a lot of help. There's not nearly as much help as you might think there is. Because there's a fair amount of awareness out there, but not that much help. But MS Hope is useful. And if you are newly diagnosed with MS, I do recommend checking it out. Check out his website. 
The recipe book is free for download, so you can go through that and see what you can do. Um, you can be kind of like me in the beginning, whereas you can ease your way onto it. Just make sure you have an end game, an end goal, that you're going to get all the way onto it. You're not going to just play around with it halfway and then just not do the rest of it. you got to go all the way and then don't cheat. So that's important. But beyond that, it's, it's worth trying. I, I still think walls is a really great idea. I think we're all different though. And so for some people, walls is a better way to go than for other people. And I know for some people, they have done swank for many, many years, which is kind of more extreme, I think, than best bet. Um, definitely very low fat, but maybe a little bit higher in sugars and things like that. So some people have lived on that for, for decades and found it really useful. And if it works for you, then that's the key. You know, whatever works for your health, that's what you need to find. And we're all individuals with different kinds of MS and it's trial and error for each of us. So, you know, do what you can. And if you already know that you're better off on a lower carb diet, then Walls might be a better way to go. Not that Walls is necessarily all low carb, but it generally is. So, um, and with uh, with Best Bet, you're, you're cutting out a lot of fats. And that has been a challenge for me, but, but I'm doing it. And I've moved over to the olive oil and avocado oil and, and all that kind of thing. So it's, it's fine, it's going well, and I appreciate that. I did wanna comment a little bit on Matt as a person. He's obviously a very energetic, athletic, high energy person, and that's cool, you know? He's got MS and he's doing all that, and he's that energetic, awesome. I love that, that's something to, to dream about being able to do one day, right? But I think he's always been that way. He's been athletic his whole life. He was an athletic teen, and then he was athletic when he was diagnosed. So Matt Embry was diagnosed at age 19 with multiple sclerosis. And there's a couple of things that are particularly scary about that. One is that he's a man. And while more women have MS than men by quite a high number, men who do have MS tend to have it much worse, generally speaking, than women do. It tends to hit them harder. So that's scary in itself. And then of course, getting diagnosed at 19 means that he's already had noticeable symptoms as a teenager. That's also very scary because most people get diagnosed with MS in their 30s or 40s or even 50s. But at 19, that's very young. And so that would suggest had he done nothing for himself, had he not done the diet and everything and all kept working out and all that he needed to do, had he not done that, he could be in a wheelchair now. It's very possible. He could be bedridden by now, that's also possible. So so that's a great thing to show. It really shows the, the dramatic difference. I know some people have said that he has benign MS and that's, that's a controversial term. I don't particularly care for it. I don't think it really answers any questions. It just means that he's doing well, <laughs> that's all it means. And does that mean he would have done well had he not done all this stuff? No, I don't think so, not for a second, obviously he has done the things he's needed to do to take care of himself and keep the inflammation out of his brain and be active and functional and he's working full time, he's raising a family, he's just doing all the stuff and he's doing all this nonprofit stuff and he's making new documentaries. I know he's got a Living Proof 2 coming out after the first Living Proof, which again, recommend, highly, highly recommend, definitely check it out. And so he's doing all of that it's working for him and that's that's incredible. I think that's awesome. And so he is an example. He gives us an example of what to do and it doesn't mean we're all gonna follow that. I know someone with MS who tried the best bet diet and yet his MS just, it wasn't gonna respond the same way and ultimately it, it ended up being something that wasn't worth the discipline when it wasn't helping him. So that happens too, I get that, we're all different. I actually personally think MS is a range of different conditions all under the same umbrella of MS. And so therefore there's different causes and there's gonna be different solutions. So Matt's got one particular kind of MS. I probably have a different kind of MS or maybe not, hopefully not. Hopefully it will work the same way as his, I don't know, but it's worth a try anyway. And he's still definitely giving us hope. He's giving us direction and he's a trailblazer. You know, there's just so much that we can do with that that is useful. So for that, kudos to him, highly recommend him. I did wanna say one thing that I found a little bit concerning as a Christian, 
Now, Matt Embry does call himself a Christian and he talks about Jesus in his interviews. And I can appreciate all of that. That, that can be a really good thing. However, he is also what can be called a syncretist. What a syncretist is, is someone who claims to worship Yahweh, loves Jesus, but also participates in other religious activities from other religions. So pagan religions, for instance. So he has no problem with things like yoga and meditation and those sorts of things. Those are, those are not Christian practices. In fact, they're very contrary to worshiping the one true God, but he does them and he encourages them. And they're not the main part of what he talks about when he is encouraging people and, and giving talks. However, he's still involved in it. Now, I don't know, he might be a fairly new Christian. I hope that's all the case is and that he does learn and grow and he, he pushes those other behaviors to the side and recognizes that they are not honoring to the one true God. But in the meantime, he is a syncretist. And do we see any problem with that? Well, you can look through the entire Old Testament and see that Israel kept falling into syncretism and Yahweh kept disciplining them for it. And it was harsh because it was not okay because it was blasphemous. But people are stubborn. We are stubborn. And I hope and pray that Matt and his family, I don't know if they're involved in this too, that they learn and grow and put aside those things and that they come to worship the one true God only. So on the very off chance that Matt, you get to see this or any of your family gets to see this or your friends, I want to encourage you in that way to step back from pagan behaviors and to worship the one true God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's my one concern with Matt Embry. I appreciate, like I said, that he talks about Jesus. That's, that's awesome. But what Jesus is it? Is this the Jesus that is the true Jesus or is this the Jesus of the pagan religions? And I, I hope it's the former. So that was a little bit scattered, but I hope that gives you some idea about Matt Embry and Living Proof and Best Bet Diet and MS Hope and all that good stuff. Definitely recommend. And I hope that it's useful to you. If you're brand new to MS, if you've just been diagnosed, it is definitely something you wanna look into because there is just so much help there. At very least, jump into the Zoom meetings. They're once a month and they're free. And also download his diet book and uh, start making the foods in it and, and see how you do and start limiting yourself to, to what's recommended on the diet and, and see how you do. And if you don't like that, go with Walls. You know, I never even actually bought Dr. Walls' book. And yet there was enough information that she put online, then I even chatted with her a little bit here and there, that I didn't actually need to buy the book. I would have liked to, but I didn't have access to it. So, um, but you, you could actually do it without even buying the book. There, there's enough information out there that you could do that. So ultimately, for sure, cut out sugar, cut out gluten, and probably egg and potentially nightshades. There, there's a variety of things, but definitely, definitely dairy, gluten, sugar, those gotta go and see how you feel, give it time and keep trying, you know, work out, definitely work out. I'm still doing my weightlifting, love it, hoping to do more in the future. Every time I have a seizure, it kind of sets me back from some of that, but um, I'm trying to keep going with the weightlifting because I love the strength. I love building that strength. That's so good for me and I love being stronger, you know? So that's my recommendation for you guys. And like I said, check out Living Proof, the documentary. Make sure you watch it and, and see what you think. And I would absolutely love to know your comments below. If you've seen it, if you have any questions or concerns, or if you've been doing the diet, how is it working for you, or all that. We'd love to know all that good stuff. So thank you for watching and God bless.